this method that I'm going to show you is inspired by the great Ansel Adams zone system. Consider what I'm going to show you, the post-processing digital equivalent for Photoshop. By dividing your image into separate zones of contrast, color, intensity, or brightness, you'll have superior control, performance, and flexibility over how your overall image will look. These zones are created by shaping your layer mass, and you usually have multiple adjustment layers in each zone. And remember what I said earlier, black hides and white reveals the effects of adjustment layer. So let's go back to Photoshop, and you can see that the image below is divided into two zones. The sky is the first zone, and then the second zone is everything else. We need to employ zones because the foreground is way too dark, and correcting for the foreground washes out the sky and vice versa. So I'm going to turn all those off and show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to add a levels adjustment layer. So I go, okay, well, I want to lighten up the foreground. Okay, foreground's right where I want it, right? Unfortunately, the sky is washed out. So again, I go, okay, well, I'll correct for the sky. Sky looks fine, and now the foreground is too dark. So that is why we split things up into zones. And in this case, there are two zones, as you can see. Uh, zone one is the sky, which is easiest to pick. And zone two is everything else. So when do you need zones? Here's when you need them. When making corrections globally won't work, like I just showed you. When there are differences in contrast, color, brightness, sharpness, and severing the image, sometimes subtle, sometimes major, that prohibit you from making corrections globally. The best example is be what I just showed you earlier. When do you not need zones? <laughs> Honestly, rarely. It depends on the type of photography. This is quite rare. If you're a product photographer, you're probably not going to need to split your image up into zones. I would say the vast majority of the time for most photographers that you're going to need to learn how to employ these zones properly. Generally, two zones are all that's necessary in most images, but you're not limited in how many zones you can use. You can divide your image into as many zones as you want. Start with the easy selection area to initiate your first zone or your first layer mask. In a landscape, it's usually the sky, and it's important to spend the necessary time creating that initial selection as accurately as possible. Because at that point, the second zone is easy to create. You're just going to simply invert the first zone selection. In other words, the second zone will be an exact reversal of the first zone, resulting in less problems with the borders and edges between the zones. I like to remind those that when you first get into building layer mask, to take your time, it's like painting a house. The prep takes most of the time when you're painting your house. It's the sanding, the taping, or whatever. It's not the painting that takes so long. In fact, if you do the proper prep, the painting is easy. It's the same when you're shaping your layer mask in your zones. Avoid problems later. Take the necessary time to get your initial selection right. Everything else should fall into place.